Welcome to Green Numbers Data Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use SQL in SAS. SQL is an amazing tool. With it, you can quickly and easily manipulate data, join data sets, generate summary statistics, and create macro variables. We'll start with the basics and build from there. SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's been used for decades to communicate with relational databases and is a really versatile tool. I've worked with good SAS programmers who came from the database world who used SQL almost exclusively. That's how powerful it is in SAS. Once you know the basics, you'll find it to be a useful and intuitive tool. When applicable, I think it's useful to demonstrate SQL while comparing our code to an equivalent SAS coding structure, like the data step. This helps anchor the new concepts by linking them to those you may already be familiar with. For example, in example one, proc print prints the data set SAS help stocks to the result window. And we can do the same thing in SQL. So in SAS, SQL code is, in, is encased in the SQL procedure, proc SQL. This starts with proc SQL and ends with quit. The very basic keywords are create table, select, and from. In this example, we're not going to use create table, so let's get rid of that. And although select is much more powerful, at the beginning it's helpful for you to think of it as the keep statement in the data step. And in this example, we use an asterisk, which means select everything or keep everything. From is analogous to the set statement in the data step. In this example, we're printing data from sashelp.stocks. First, I'll run the data step. And now I'll run it in SQL. And you can see how our SQL is generating the same output as our proc print. Now, I don't very often use SQL to print to results, although you might. More frequently, I use it to create a data set, and I'll show you how in example two. In example two, we use the data step to create a new data set named demo. And we're making this data set from the stocks data set again. All this does is copy the stocks data set verbatim. And we can do the same thing in SQL. To the code we used in the previous step, I added the create table statement, which tells SAS to create a new table or data set named demo. Again, we're selecting all columns from the stocks data set. When we run the data step, we see that in the log, the demo was created with 699 rows and eight columns, which in SAS are synonyms for observations and variables. All right, moving on to example three. Our data step uses a keep statement to keep only four variables, stock, date, high, and volume. Our equivalent SQL code uses the select clause to return those four columns. One advantage to SQL though, is that you can easily reorder these columns. If we wanna put volume first, we just have to move it to the front. Keep in mind that commas are required between the column names in the select clause. And make sure you don't put the comma at the end. This is a common reason for errors in SQL. And you see when we run this code, the demo table contains four columns and volume is listed first. In example four, we're limiting our table to records where volume is greater than 10 million. In both the data step and SQL, we've used the same where statement. You'll see when I run the code that in the output, only rows greater than 10 million are included. In example five, we create a new variable named diff. Diff holds the difference between the opening value and the closing value. 
The syntax for the SQL code is a little different than in the data step. The calculation is listed first, then the assignment to diff is after the as. Let's look at the output. We see the new diff variable here, but you can see it's not formatted. There's no dollar sign. So in example six, we give diff a currency format and add a label. In the data step, we use the format statement to give diff a format of $8.2, which is the same format as open and close. In SQL, we use the format option to apply the currency format to our diff column and the label option to apply the label. When we look at the output, we see that diff now has a format and a label. In example seven, we order by stock, then by the opening value from highest to lowest. But we need a separate proc sort to go with our data step data set. But in our SQL, we added an order by within the same SQL block. Here we see the data set is ordered by stock and then by open in descending order. For our last example, I simplified the code because it's a little more complex. In the data step, we added a new variable named result. Result equals gained if diff is greater than zero, lost if diff is less than zero, or same if there was no change. Notice that we added a length statement to set the length for the result to six characters. Otherwise, the length is set by the value of result in the first record. If the first value is lost or stay, then the length of result would be four characters, and the value gained would be truncated in subsequent records. Then we added equivalent code in SQL using the case expression. Case expressions start with case, then when which in this context acts as an if statement. When diff is greater than zero, then assign gained to result. When diff is less than zero, then assign lost to result. Else, assign same to result. And signals the end of the case expression. Notice that because we refer to column diff that was created in the same select clause, as our case expression, we need to add the calculated component before diff. Alternatively, because open minus close equals diff, we could replace calculated diff with open minus close and get the same result. In which case we wouldn't need the calculated component. Let's run this. Here's our result column with the values we were expecting. And that's it for this video. If you practice and become familiar with these fundamentals, I promise you the more complex SQL code will come much more quickly. In the next video, we'll go in depth on maybe the most powerful feature of SQL, joins. In other videos, we'll get into summarizing data and creating macro variables with SQL. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to get more content. Thanks for watching.